Hey guys, Michael from Fire and Brilliance, and today's episode will be about pink sapphires, and I'm gonna get right into it. All right, so here's what I want to go over. If you already watched the Ruby episode, then you may already know that pink sapphires and rubies are somewhat related. They're actually almost the same thing, but it's obviously different because of the color, okay? So uh, again, let me go ahead, and if you haven't seen the channel, uh, then, or have, if you haven't seen the episode, rather, then definitely go back to that episode before you watch this one so that you kind of understand what I'm saying. Uh, but that being said, I could definitely give you the rundown again. It's quite um, um, simple when it comes to how to explain a sapphire, okay? So it comes with the mineral, uh, a variety of corundum. So sapphires and rubies are made of the same mineral. The only difference is that anything that is very red will be considered a ruby. Everything that's any other color besides red is considered a sapphire, including the most common sapphire, a blue sapphire. In today's episode, we'll be talking about pink sapphires and the relationship to it when it comes to rubies, all those made of the same variety, there is a difference, okay? So typically with corundum, if there is a trace of chromium, it will have that more of that pinkish to reddish color, and that's how it actually creates a pink a uh, sapphire or a red ruby. With that being said, there is a difference, and let me go explain to you what it is. Okay, first of all, based on geography, pink sapphires were originally from Burma and Sri Lanka until the 1990s. Many, many sapphires, quality gem sapphires, are coming from Madagascar, okay? Uh, now, the colors of pink sapphires are usually from hot, vivid tone to a soft pink. Okay, so again, that's a hot, vivid tone. So it's a very bright, vibrant, saturated pink to a soft pink. That's typically how you would describe a pink sapphire. All right, but what is the difference? Well, let's take a look here. The difference between a red ruby and a pink sapphire is actually very objective and subject subjective depending on who you ask and the people that you ask, people in the trade versus the consumer, etc. And, and let me explain to you what, what I mean by that, okay? There's obviously an objective definition of what a pink sapphire versus a red ruby is, okay? So in other words, when you are describing colors, you're describing basically three things, which is a tone, the hue, and the saturation, right? So when you think about red, you think about a very vibrant, deep, dark, kind of like a blood color type of red. And when you're thinking about pink, typically you're thinking about a hot, vivid tone to a soft pink, right? So that's basically more of the objective view, but at the same time, it's also subjective because it depends on who you ask and what they see and how they perceive things, right? So uh, again, uh, art, jewelry is an art and color is obviously an art, so it may be subjective. It also de depends on the cultural definition definition as well too. Uh, what one culture may perceive uh, as red, another culture may perceive as pink and vice versa. Okay, so that being said, when you are talking about pink sapphires versus red rubies, it's also highly, highly dependent on if you are the buyer or the seller. And let me explain to you what that means, okay? So for the longest time, people that's been in the trade, trading and buying and selling jewelry, especially rubies uh, and pink sapphires, rubies are typically um, looked upon as a higher end uh, of the precious gems scale, whereas pink sapphires are just as beautiful, uh, but it's more of a lower end. So if you're the seller, you want to describe it as a ruby, right? And if you're the buyer, it may be more advantageous to call it as a pink sapphire because you probably get it for a lower price point. So there's a difference. That's the reason why many people that actually sell rubies or pink sapphires, depending where they are in the world, sellers typically will try to sell it as a ruby or at least from many centuries ago, whereas today there's much more of a concrete definition uh, and obviously there's so much more information out there in the world today, so it's a little, it's a little easier uh, for buyers to be able to distinguish a pink sapphire from a red ruby, but typically uh, for many, many, many years, sellers will try to sell pink sapphires as a ruby 
and buyers would try to buy pink sapphires as a pink sapphire as opposed to a ruby because based on the price point, what's more advantageous to them, right? So uh, again, today's world is a little different, but we're talking about uh, the trade for many, many, many years and many centuries, okay? So that being said, what are the price variables for a pink sapphire? Obviously, the carat weight matters. The, the larger the carat weight or the larger the gemstone, the, the higher the price. Uh, the clarity grade, what is a clarity grade? Is it clear? Are there inclusions? Are there not inclusions? Is it cloudy? When you take a look at it, is it transparent? Is it a beautiful clear stone or is it extremely cloudy? Uh, the, the more clear it is or the higher the clarity grade, uh, the higher the price as well. Okay, so, um, and on top of that, it, this is really, as this is somewhat subjective, but uh, for the most part, typically as of right now, uh, there's a higher demand for a softer pink as opposed to a vibrant, hot, vivid pink. And the reason being is because it closely resembles a pink diamond. Uh, typically diamonds, pink diamonds, are more of a soft pink as opposed to a very hot pink. Uh, so when people are buying pink sapphires, some, if they are going for that pink diamond look, typically it's a higher demand. And for the softer pink, typically the prices are a little higher for a soft pink sapphire. Uh, obviously with the lab versus natural, the prices will obviously be a huge difference as well. Uh, typically if you purchase a very high end, high quality, uh, natural, untreated, pink sapphire, then the prices will be very high. Anything that's created in a lab, although the quality, the clarity, the, the grading will be beautiful, uh, the difference is that anything that's controlled in a lab, you can also control the cost. And if you can control the cost, typically uh, of the same quality, uh, a lab created gemstone will be a lot less for a higher quality uh, grade, okay? so. And last but not least, if it's a natural, it can be treated or untreated. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, especially for sapphires, typically what they do is they will heat treat a sapphire to enhance the color of the gemstone. So if they want it to be more pink, uh, they could possibly heat it up, okay? So, uh, uh, so the, or add heat to it, and therefore, once they tr treat it based on heat, uh, even if it's a natural, they can also man modify based on a treated uh, system of uh, adding heat to it, which will enhance the color and therefore reduce the price. But then if you have a very high quality gemstone with a beautiful color, high clarity, that is untreated, then the price will be very high. So those are typically the variables that you want to look for, especially if you're in the market. If you're looking for a pink sapphire and you don't know what to look for, then these are typically the main points of what you should definitely consider, okay? So again, if you are in the market and you're looking for something that uh, is a pink sapphire for your engagement, for your pendant, for your necklace, or for just a piece of jewelry that you want to wear, uh, then these are typically the variables. Understand what the mineral is. Understand where you're buying it from because these uh, areas of where you buy it from typically will also um, uh, be a variable for price as well. Uh, also, know the colors that you want. Is Do you want a more of a hot pink or a soft pink? Uh, obviously, the, the soft pink in today's world, the demand's a little higher, so the price may be a little higher as well. And also know the difference between a ruby and a sapphire. Although both are made of corundum, um, are you really buying a ruby or are you buying a pink sapphire? Again, uh, typically rubies are priced a little higher than a pink sapphire. So these are the, the types of differences that you should look into and you should definitely ask these type of questions. Uh, is it more of a subjective or objective view on the color? Uh, is, it, is there a specific culture definition of where you're buying it in the world? And are you buying it from a, are you buying it from a buyer's point of view or are you buying it from a seller's point of view, right? Because obviously different people have a different advantage on when to sell and when, how, to, how to sell and how to buy. And these obviously are the main variables from carrot, clarity, color, as well as lab versus natural. And if, if, if it's natural, then if it's treated or untreated. All right, so the first stone uh, that I took out here is the natural. All right, so this is a pink sapphire. Uh, it's more of the hot, vivid pink. Uh, this is definitely a natural sapphire. The only difference is that it's definitely been treated. Okay, so uh, there's been a heat treatment on this gemstone to increase the pink or increase the color of the stone. All right, so uh, this is made of 100% corundum. In other words, it's the mineral, variety of mineral, that creates sapphire and rubies. In this case, uh, this is a pink sapphire, an oval, brilliant cut. It's faceted and 
It's an eight by six millimeter, eight millimeters in length and six millimeters in width. Okay, so I'm gonna take out the second stone, which is going to look very similar. I was able to find almost an equivalent stone uh, that is a lab created sapphire, also a pink sapphire, also an eight by six millimeter. However, the carat weights are slightly different. I'll explain to you why in a bit, okay, once we measure it. <laughs> so the second stone here is also a pink sapphire. It's a lab created, lab grown pink sapphire. It's also a hot vivid pink, so it's not one of those light pinks. It's a very, very, very pink, hot pink color. It's also an 8 by 6 millimeter. It's also made of corundum. Uh, it's also a variety where it creates uh, a pinkish color as opposed to a blue or red that creates a ruby. It's also an 8 by 6, 8 millimeters in length and six millimeters in width, okay? So let me go ahead and uh, put both next to each other on my hand here. As you can see, both of these gemstones have a very, very similar coloration to it. Uh, the natural is slightly darker, but for the most part, it looks very, very close. Uh, the only difference here is one is man-made, one is basically unearthed, and faceted, cut and faceted into a gemstone and heat was also applied to this specific gemstone to enhance that coloration, that hot pink that you see here. Uh, but all in all, both are uh, of the same variety of uh, mineral corundum and, and they're both very, very hot pink. Now, um, although both are eight by six millimeters in weight, uh, in length and width, right approximately the natural sapphire is slightly heavier than the lab and i'll give you a couple of seconds to guess why okay um, it has nothing to do with the fact that it's made of anything different other than corundum they're both made of corundum they're both pink they're both eight by six millimeters although this one looks a slightly wider uh, but that is two carats and that one is a approximately 1.6 carats and the reason being is because this specific gemstone was cut slightly deeper and a little more rounded in the pavilion which added more weight okay whereas this lab gemstone um, was cut slightly skinnier and shorter at the bottom so it's, so it's a little pointier right and it's also shorter from uh, in terms of the depth and that alone was able to add about 0.4 carats in the gemstone on the natural versus the lab um, so that's the only difference here uh, but obviously with any gemstone depending on how it's cut the carat weight will reflect based on the length to width to depth ratio uh, for the most part also based on the shape and uh, of the gemstone as well uh, but for the labs as well as the natural uh, many times you can even custom cut it uh, if there's if the rough is big enough uh, to meet a specific carriage size okay so um, that being said just take a look at it here again I want you to see uh, the lab versus the natural both are very pink both are basically almost the same color uh, with the natural being slightly darker um, and that's that okay so I'm gonna go ahead and weigh it and then measure it I mean, measure it first, just so I can show you the depth difference, and then weigh it uh, to prove to you that the carat weights are slightly different, and then provide you with the price points. All right, so the first gemstone that I will be measuring is the lab created pink sapphire. I'm gonna measure the width first, okay? So it should be approximately six millimeters. There you go. It's a little larger than six millimeters. Okay, in terms of the width, let me go ahead and turn that around uh, to measure the length. All right. There you go. And there you go. It's about eight millimeters in length. And the last step is to measure the depth. Okay, so you can see the difference in the, uh, the depth there. So that's approximately four millimeters, a little um, higher than four millimeters, so it's about 4.1 uh, millimeters to be exact. So that's about an eight, uh, eight by six by 4.1 around there. Okay, so uh, let me take out the natural pink sapphire 
and go ahead and weigh that for you. All right, so let's measure the width first. Okay, it should be approximately six millimeters. Uh, it's actually a lot larger than six millimeters, about 6.4 in terms of the width. Okay, let me measure the length. All right, so it's a little larger or higher in terms of than an eight millimeter, so it's about an 8.3 around there, okay? And the last step is to measure the depth. And the depth is definitely way higher than a four millimeter, so it's about a 4.7 millimeter. So as you can see, uh, although this gemstone is comparatively about the same size, uh, you know, looking for an eight by six millimeters, slightly larger, and therefore the weight should definitely also reflect that as well, okay? Uh, so let me go ahead and take that out here. All right, so let's go ahead and weigh the lab-created pink sapphire first. Should be approximately 1.6. There you go, 1.63. Okay. And the next one should be approximately 2 carats. There you go, 2.05. All right, so um, again, both are pink sapphires. Both are approximately eight by six millimeters, uh, but obviously the natural is just cut slightly longer, slightly wider, and slightly deeper. Therefore, the weight of the natural is about two carats, uh, whereas the lab created was cut a little, uh, about an eight by six millimeter, and at a four millimeter depth, so that one was weigh, weighs in about 1.6 carats. Okay, so let me go ahead and go over the differences in prices for you, okay? Um, so in terms of just the quality in general, because we do want to compare apples to apples when we're talking about prices, um, you know, the, the in terms of the quality, it's very, very similar actually. If you take a look at it, both have a very high clarity grade. Um, I would say the lab grown or this one or over here um, is a little more transparent. Um, it definitely is uh, slightly less included uh, than the natural. Obviously, that makes a lot of sense because a natural gemstone found in Mother Earth um, will typically uh, have some inclusions in it uh, because basically nature is chaotic right so uh, typically it's not formed to perfection uh, whereas something that's created in a lab you can't control the environment and there therefore you can control the result uh, for the most part of the final product now that being said both are eight by six millimeters um, approximately obviously the natural is slightly larger and deeper and longer and wider uh, but both are approximately the same colors uh, one is treated uh, natural treated uh, and both are uh, basically made of corundum with a pink uh, color uh, to show that it's a pink sapphire um, now if you are to purchase this lab created pink sapphire an 8 by 6 millimeter oval brilliant cut it's going to cost you approximately uh, anywhere between five hundred and sixty five dollars to about six hundred and fifty dollars around there okay uh, whereas if you were to buy uh, this eight by six millimeter a natural an eye clean pink sapphire gemstone and it's heat treated uh, it will cost you approximately five thousand to about fifty five hundred dollars depending on where you buy it and who you buy it from all right so uh, that being said go ahead and take a look at it one last time uh, i do always want to end it and let you know that you know there's really no right or wrong answer uh, at the end of the day uh, purchase what your heart desires if you prefer a natural then go with the natural if you prefer a lab then go with the lab uh, there are many reasons as to why people purchase one over the other some uh, but at the end of the day it's really up to you as to what you feel as near and dear to your heart and uh, you know our job here is just kind of showcase and show you exactly what your options are so I hope you like what you saw there. Um, definitely, again, if you've been following the channel, then thank you so much. And if you are new to the channel, then welcome. Um, you know, just help us out by hitting the like button. Leave a comment below. It definitely helps out the algorithm and definitely uh, helps the channel out here. That being said, if you have any questions at all, please leave a comment below. Let us know uh, what you think. Let us know what you like. Let us know what you don't like. If there, is there another gemstone that you want to learn? We will put on a list. And once we put on that list, if there's a request that has been requested long enough and and if it's popular enough that we make make a video just for you okay so thanks again and i'll see you again next time goodbye